Hello, welcome back to the NA Podcast. I'm Ashley, and if you're watching this on video and are wondering why my hair looks like this, it looks like I, you know, one of those ducks from those, like the dish soap commercial where they fall into like oil and then they have to clean them up. That's how I feel like I look like right now. Um, I'm an absolute greaseball, and that is because I'm doing a hair mask currently. And I started doing it, and then I realized I needed to record this for the podcast. So anyway, I'm sorry that you have to look at this, but that's neither here nor there. What you're here for is today's episode, and that is on cultivating our relationships with, with Christ. Our last episode was just the introduction to this series, I guess you could say. This one is going to look at the first um, set of spiritual disciplines uh, that can help when we desire to cultivate our relationships with Christ. The next episode will kind of be the last half of those, and then we'll have more videos talking about a slightly different thing on this topic. Anyway, that was very cryptic. Enough of my rambling. Enjoy the video. And it's, I just, I can't stop thinking about this. But oh. it was, um, it's a John Piper, John Piper's blog, that Daily Disciple. Oh, goodness. Daily Grace or something. No, not Daily Grace. That's the other guy. Anyways, John Piper's blog he puts out. I follow them on Facebook, y'all. So you can go do that. But they they put out a bunch of stuff. And I save them. I'm one of those bad people mm. that goes and saves them to read them all later. So I oh, have like same. tons piled up. Yep. Um, but this one was about prayer. And it said, prayer um, should be described as the reflex of our hearts, the aroma of our waking hours. Ooh. I know. It's not so good. Yeah. I just love it. Um, and I just think that that's such a beautiful way to describe prayer because it should just be like that, that reflex mm-hmm. of just like whatever is happening in our lives, like that's our go-to, like that's just not, na- it just naturally flows from our life, whether it's joy, whether it's pain, whether it's questions that it should just flow. Right. Um, so <laughs> That is, I guess, one of the best ways to describe prayer, I think. Um, I've ha- I wrote down a few notes about prayer, so let me look them up here really fast. Uh, I, I think prayer is so personal and so intimate. Um, and it's also, I think there's a correlation between prayer and seeing spiritual battles all around us. I feel like it really opens our eyes to um, what is happening. Um, One of my favorite stories is in Kings where I think it's Elijah. I always get it mixed up. Is stuck in a town being chased by King Ahab and a servant comes out the next morning and Ahab has surrounded like the whole city with chariots and he's like freaking out and Elijah prays and he prays that that God would open the servant's eyes to show him um, what's really happening. And in, instantly, the servant's eyes are opened and he sees in between Ahab's army and the city is God's heavenly army with fiery chariots. And he knew that he was safe. And so I feel like that's really what prayer does is it opens us up to see what's really happening. Mm. We think we have like this battle between flesh and blood, but it's not. Um, it's against the principalities and the dark forces and, um, and I think prayer opens that up. And so, um, I just think prayer is so exciting and so great, um, for us to do. So, um, yeah, I think that's kind of a good overview of prayer. Do you have anything else you want to add about prayer? I just loved how you explained that all. Like, it's so... It's literally just talking to God. God talks to us through his word and we mm-hmm. get to talk back to him through prayer. And so like it is a relationship. It goes two ways. And I just yeah. think that's so beautiful. How then can we cultivate prayer or prayer lives? Oh man, I would say the thing that has helped me the most is um, the praying life by Paul Miller. So if Ooh. you guys are writing things down, write down a book. I have it somewhere here too well I'll just pull out the discussion guide because it's right here but um this is what it looks like the praying life by Paul Miller and it's probably been one of the most um influential book 
it's like my top five books. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but he just really talks about prayer in just a relatable way. Mm. Um, I always felt like I could pray pretty easily, like just talking to God. Mm -hmm. Um, but I always felt like I wasn't a very strong prayer warrior. I don't know how, like where you're at on your prayer life. I'm curious to hear your side too. Um, and so I really struggled with that. And so like remembering, like some people just remember people's needs really well and remember to pray for them. And I am not that person. <laughs> like I want to be that person, but I just don't feel like I was. And so like how I, I really struggled to find a system that really helped me um, navigate praying for others and um, mine now. And he talks about this in the book are um these suckers so I use them two ways um I'm gonna show you hopefully they don't get hopefully I gotta find one that's not super personal hold on (laughs) um let's see like okay so like this was my interns so the first one I use it is I would use it for specific people and I would choose a verse and I would write their name I would write the verse and I would write like just bullet point prayer things throughout the years. Mm -hmm. And I flipped through these and like, I would just read them and I'd be praying almost, you know what I mean? So that helps me. And then this is my um, one that I have now and I just use it for requests. Oh, cute. Um, And then I have certain pages that are like more specific, but like, like um, my family. All these are interns again. But, like, I asked our family and interns. We do words for the year. Oh, cute. So I don't know if you guys can mm-hmm. see that. But so I'll just write their word. And I feel like these have really helped me. Like, I don't know. This system works for me. It's not going to work for everybody. I know there's a lot of systems out there for mm-hmm. prayer. Um, but this is the one that I found that that works for me. So. That's awesome. I yeah. I am in the same boat as you. Like, I want to be a prayer warrior and one of those women who you know is just praying for people all the time. And I've been really bad at it. Um, But recently, my husband and I, we implemented a little, like, it's literally just popsicle sticks with people's names on them. And so at dinner, we pull one, Mm -hmm. (laughs) and then we put it in the discard pile, kind of like we're playing cards and pray for that person, just so, (laughs) like, we're held a little bit more accountable to praying for people um so yeah I don't know that's what's worked for me but I like that little journal idea too I love the popsicles I think that's (laughs) great and what a great visual especially like I don't know who all of our audience is but if we have audience members that have like a lot of little kids Mm -hmm. something like the popsicle stick is like a great um visual and representation of um, those things. And I love what you said, intentionality. I really think that's the key yeah. is, um, being intentional with praying. Yes. Um, I wake up every morning now and I had to train myself to do this, but there was a season where I had this like really strong, like morning routine and I just not there right now. I'm, kind of upset with I'm in the same boat as you. <laughs> There's yeah. so many overlaps. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, it's so annoying. Mm-hmm. I just like, I'm so annoyed with myself, but my life has completely changed mm-hmm. in the last six months too. So I, I'm trying to like, to like find my new normal. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I used to pr- like the first thing I would do is wake up and I would pray and this is the weird thing I gave myself. Okay. So my old routine is I would wake up at 4 30. Yeah, oh my gosh. I know. It's weird. It's crazy. <laughs> I love it though. That's awesome though. Wow. Anyways, Good for you. And it, it really worked for me. I went to bed at 9 30, but it really yeah, worked for yeah. me. Um, but I gave myself permission. Like I would I would get up and I would go to the living room when I had a living room. And <laughs> yeah. I um, you know, wrap myself in blankets, whatever, turn on the fire. And I actually gave myself permission to fall asleep in the middle of praying. Which is a weird thing to do. But, like, I would sit up and I would start praying and I would just be talking to God and then I would, like, fall asleep. And then I would wake up and I would start talking to God again. And then, like, it it, it was sounds so weird, but, like, it was just 
special intimate time with just me and the Lord. And mm-hmm. it was so quiet. And, yeah. and it was, it wasn't like so rigid where I had to like force myself to stay awake. Like I just wanted to just be with him and give him the first thoughts and the first issues of my day. Mm. And that was what I was doing. And so um, I gave myself permission to have that space. Um, and of course I could, I had the time to do it. I created that time to do that. Sometimes we don't have the ability yeah. to do that. Um, my prayer life now, I'm usually praying while I'm on the stand guarding. So, you know, definitely cannot fall asleep. While yes, that's <laughs> true. While I'm on the stand. Um, so it's a little different, but I really enjoyed that time when I was, when I had that. Space. Yeah. That's so cool. When COVID hit and I moved home, that was like the first time in my life that I had a consistent devos, like morning Mm -hmm. devos, similar to you, not 430 though. Good, good on you. Um, (laughs) but yeah, like literally the same, the last six months I got married. And so I'm also trying to find my new normal. I started student teaching. I got really sick. And so it's like a lot of things kind of happened and now I'm kind of like back at it and I'm kind of like trying to just figure (laughs) figure things out um what my prayer life looks like for me now but tell us more (laughs) tell us more of how we can cultivate our relationship with Christ yes let's go to bible study okay this is my personal favorite (laughs) I love to study I love word studies I love well I'll just show you this is my devotional booklet and everyone like thinks I'm crazy because it. it looks it looks crazy but like like, this is the kind of study that I, I like. I love it. So, Look at that handwriting. Good handwriting. Thank you. I work really hard. This is the only place where you'll see beautiful handwriting. <laughs> All my other notebooks are, like, scribbled. <laughs> but, um, but I love study, and I find it fascinating. So this is the one that I love. Like we talked about, there's always one that you, like, really mm-hmm. love and one that you, like, really struggle with. So um, consistency with Bible study, though, has been an issue for me personally. Um, but Bible study, and I think it's good to differentiate because there's Bible, I think there's Bible reading and there's Bible study. Yes. And this is why I think that. I think study is um, specifically digging into the scripture, um, understanding the context, understanding um, the original intent, all of those things, right? So we talk about like hermeneutics, all that good stuff. Bible reading, think about it. The Bible is a book mm-hmm. that he gave to us. And there's poetry books within there. There's history books within there. Sometimes it's just fun to just read. Yeah. Um, And I really love just reading through the Bible um, and just enjoying it. And when I'm studying, though, I can't – it's not the same. Like, I can't study a passage – I mean, you can't study a passage and read a passage because you're going to read it to study it. But, like, if you're just reading it to enjoy and see the whole thing – it's very different than when you're piecing it out. Like this yeah. is this is First Thessalonians, and I've been here for a year, oh, I love and I'm it. not done yet. Yeah. You know, so like that's way different than like last year. I also um, was able to read through the Bible, and like you can do them in tandem, but they're different. Yes, and it's not the same. So um, I really think there's a difference, and I think it's I think it's good. To, that they're different and I think it's fun to be able to mix it up and mm-hmm. I think you need both I definitely think you need both in your life um there may be a season where you're not able to study as much and you're just reading and that's totally okay and there may be a season where um you're studying and you're not reading as much mm-hmm. and that's okay too but I think like within the scope of your whole spiritual walk like you you need both Um, and one of the, the perks to Bible study, like why we need it is like, um, you need to understand that like context is key, right? You need Mm -hmm. to understand scripture never contradicts scripture. You need to understand that there's one interpretation, but multiple applications. Yeah. Um, we need to, um, understand that we believe in a literal, literal, grammatical, historical interpretation of the scriptures. And what does that mean? And, um, when in doubt, take it back to the original context. Mm-hmm. Do you know how to do that? Um, and those are the things that I think that we should be training people on how to study the Bible so that we interpret it correctly. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's why I think the difference between Bible study and Bible reading, and I think Bible study is so important. And how can you learn some of those things? Um, hermeneutics classes. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Um, I know that sounds, it sounds like a big, scary word, but um, it's how to study the Bible, um, understand um, some theology. Like, I, I love that you're doing the Bible basics. I love that you're talking about theological concepts because mm. um, I think we need to understand um, like what we talked about last time, how the Bible is reliable, how the Bible is inerrant. Like we, we do need to understand those things and, and why. And like, if you were going to say like, okay, I believe Jesus is God, right? Then, um, how do you, um, how do you show that? through the scripture Mm -hmm. and and can you do that and like that's the purpose of um of bible study is being able to to do that so um and there's lots of like i said hermeneutics classes there's how to read the bible i think i have it here too somewhere i don't know where i put it but i have it too but it's how to read the bible by, by howard Hendricks. um no sorry it's living by the book by howard Hendricks. Um, we actually used it when I uh, taught the interns, we did our hermeneutics class. That was the book we used. And Mm. in my college hermeneutics class, they use that book as well. So it's pretty, um, I think it's pretty common for, um, hermeneutics classes to use Howard Hendricks. Um, Zuck is another one, um, you'll hear of, he writes. Um, books it is definitely college level. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like living by the book really breaks it down. Um, in fact, there's a workbook that you can um, use with living by the book that will help. I just feel like it's just very step by step, very um, user friendly and not mm-hmm. a, not big, deep theological phrases, but mm-hmm. it still um, showcases. Um, how to study the Bible in a really um, user-friendly way. So um, those I, I, the, those are my sig- biggest suggestions, I would say. I'll be sure to leave those in the description of both the – oh, my gosh, I keep hitting my knee against my <laughs> – what I'm sitting on. I'll be sure to leave that in the description of our video and then also on the audio version on our podcast. Yeah. Um, one book that has – been impactful to me is uh women of the word by jen wilkin i don't know if you've heard of that book at all um but i love jen wilkin but not i haven't heard of this one so it's so good um one of my mentors recommended it to both me and anya and it's so good and my one of my friends hunter who's been on the podcast it's so good you should read it because it's very user friendly it's not that college level obviously like that college level is really good um Mm -hmm. And, but also like if you're just like you were saying like that might be good for some people if you're right here right. Uh, but if you're at a different place this might be a good starting place and then you work right. up to it so I don't know it's fun that there's so many good options out there I'll, yes. I'm gonna have to check out the books that you recommended though because yes. I definitely want to be like cultivating that area of my spiritual yeah. journey as well and, and let me just say like there's something like I'm all for like where you hear me tout it all the time about hermeneutics and like, you know, I, you know, those kinds of things and the Greek and the Hebrew. And I, and I love all that stuff, but if that sounds overwhelming to you, let me just come on here and say like you, all you need in reality mm-hmm. is this right there. Yep. All you need is this. And I started um, my journey at the age of six, right? That's when I trusted Jesus Christ as my savior I was six years old. And I started reading the Bible. That's it. And my parents, um, they didn't go to, they went to a Christian school. They didn't go to Bible college. Mm -hmm. Um, They would never say that they, like, half the theology words that I use with, you know, talking, they're like, I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. Um, But I was like, you taught me this. They're like, we did? Well, yeah, you did because you taught me this. Yeah. And it translates. It does. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the biggest things that, all my parents taught me, which now you can have it online. I think I showed it to you last time. Um, my parents taught me how to use a Strong's Concordance. Mm-hmm. That was the best thing they could have ever taught me. If if you don't even need to worry about all of the craziness, just pick up a Strong's Concordance and your Bible mm-hmm. and go to town. The only reason I say that is because um, what people don't know, and I'm not going to get into all translations right now, right? Okay, 
I'm not going to go there. But <laughs> um, the, the Bible was not originally written in English. Yeah. Right? And we have all these different translations, and um, there's theories on how people dif- translate the Bible. And so the best thing my parents taught me at, at a young age was that it was originally written in, in Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic. Well, where can you find those Greek, um, Aramaic, and Hebrew a language that was used to write the Bible, you you can actually find it in the Strong's Concordance. Mm. Because what the Strong's Concordance does is it lists every single word used in the Bible, and then it will um, give you a number, and it will shoot you back to the back where it will have a dictionary of all of those Greek or Hebrew words. Mm-hmm. And so um, you're taking it back to the original text. And I think that is the best thing we can teach people how to do. Yeah. All the other stuff I just learned as I continued to study mm-hmm. um, on my own and I listened and I and, and I gathered information. But in reality, you need the Bible. And, and if you're confused about something, take it back to the original text. Mm-hmm. And then you're golden. Bada bing, bada you know? boom. Yeah, exactly. And so it's a, it doesn't have to be a big, scary thing. You don't have to have a theology degree. You don't have to know no. all the words. Um, just pick up that Bible and that Strong's Concordance. And, and I can't read Greek. Like, you saw my devotional booklet, and you'll see all those pretty Greek letters, and everyone's like, oh, you write Greek, right? I can't read Greek. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no idea what half those letters mean, yeah. you know, but the more I'm using it, the more I'm familiarizing myself with it, and now I can pick out um, root some root words mm. or I can pick out words that I know the definition of because I've studied that original um, language and that's just simply because I've been doing it for so long yeah you know yeah so exactly. that's that's the cool thing about it that is so cool greasy haired Ashley back again telling you that this is where I'm going to cut the video next week uh, come back to hear more about these spiritual disciplines we'll see you next time